Welcome back, everybody. This is the original artwork, Mana Crypt by Vulcan Baga for the Kaladesh Inventions uh, set. Beautiful artwork. I'm going to go over it. I'm going to go over the art, uh, investing in art, Vulcan's art, a little bit. And why it's time to get into some Magic the Gathering art, if you haven't already. Enjoy the video, guys. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. And today is more of an art discussion video about this beautiful painting, The Mana Crypt by Vulcan Baga. Uh, it is from the Kaladesh set. And remember, the Kaladesh Invention set was uh, a, kind of this, uh, many people think is one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic, kind of chase cards, uh, new border, fancy uh, foiling uh, that Wizards of the Coast did uh, a few years ago. And I got to say, this Mana Crypt is one of my all-time favorites. This original painting has been sold to a client in the United States. Uh, and I just want to do a video and probably have a few other discussion videos having the piece in the background just because, you know, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the complexity to it. Uh, I will zoom in and do some details here in a little bit. But first things first, uh, I don't do very many art videos, but when I do, I like to always share with you guys kind of my passion for it. Uh, for those of you who have not uh, gone to Volcom Baga's website, the link will be below. Please check him out. Uh, he's very kind, very professional. Uh, he was actually, uh, I think he worked with Donato Gencola. So his, uh, I want to say his style is exactly the same, but it's, uh, I mean, you could tell he's a master at the lighting of like, uh, just the, the, the metals and stuff. And, and also portraits you'll notice he has, uh, Donato's really great with hands. He's, he's amazing with hands. He loves hands. And just the portraits are just gorgeous. So I can tell some similarities, but they all have their own styles. Uh, I I got to say, like, you know, when I first met Vulcan, uh, super professional, very humble. Uh, I met him at, uh, I think, a magic show or a LuxCon. I think one of, the, one of those. And I instantly just was gravitated towards his art. I found his art to be extremely uh, uh, just, just, under like people didn't really know him at the time. Like, I would say underappreciated, but just just not known at, at the time. He kind of started his career doing some magic cards, some fine art, his own personal work, and then I I instantly was like, dude, this guy is going to be a legend in the industry. And uh, if you fast forward today, twenty twenty one, his art is has he's created some of the most iconic pieces for Magic the Gathering. Uh, uh, for the modern years, especially for magic. And also, he's one of the few uh, artists that, that kept with the traditional uh, kind of painting. You know, like, uh, there's artists like Chris Ron, Matt Stewart, guys I really admire, Howard Lyon, great, great artists, okay, great people who um, always painted traditionally. I think uh, Howard may have used some uh, digital here and there, but I know that Chris... Ron and Matt Stewart always did traditional. I'm not sure if they ever done a digital painting. Maybe. I don't know. But if you kind of follow the timeline of original magic art, uh, when I was getting into the scene uh, initially, in, I think around 2009, the market was still kind of at a level point. It, 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 you know, it wasn't quite 1993 level prices and stuff or investing or collecting, but it just wasn't the same. Uh, like what it is today. Today you have a robust environment where now you have this uh, you know, MTG art market that has daily sales of sketches, original art. Uh, you have um, you know, sales on eBay going for multi five figures. I know Therese Nielsen paintings have break six figures in terms of uh, there were these Planeswalker paintings she did uh, and sketches. There's like well, well over six figures. Uh, for the San Diego Comic-Con, 
So it just shows you the power of some of the newer art. Uh, we're not talking about, and I, I'm not even discussing the older art at all today. I'm talking the, the newer art that's in Magic the Gathering. So um, these artists emerged, you know, a lot of these guys like Steve Prescott is another name, Ryan Pancos. Uh, there's a lot of guys, I'm, I'm obviously missing a lot of names here. Scott Murphy. Randy Gallegos has been around for a while, but obviously he still does traditional art. These guys kept with the traditional art. Uh, Wayne Reynolds is amazing. Kev Walker obviously is a legend in magic. These are not alpha artists. You see what I'm saying? Like these are not like, you know, the Julie Barrows, the Mark Tadines, the Dan Frazier's, Doug Schuler, you know, stuff like that. This is all of, and Christopher Rush, obviously the legend. Um, this is more about where has it gone? And, I gotta say, like I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty surprised in a way that's accelerated so fast. But I gotta say, there's a few things I realized that actually trigger the market. Everybody asks me, like, how did this happen? Why are the prices like five thousand dollars for regular paintings now when they were used to be a thousand? And a couple things. One, uh, one most important thing is I think wages, money, inflation. Money has flowed into the market unlike anything else in collectibles, and especially art. Art is a one of one. Obviously, you have one piece, and it is really just sometimes never comes across ever again. So people are willing to bid astronomical values for uh, iconic paintings, beautiful paintings, or it could be demonic paintings. It doesn't matter. Whatever they like, right? Whatever feels good means something to you personally. And because of that reason, the art market has skyrocketed. Another thing is number two, Planeswalkers. Planeswalkers is one of those things where it used to, like Jason the Mind Sculptor, uh, it was a digital painting by Jason Chan. Uh, and that painting is the most iconic painting. They have yet to, I think, done a Jace the Mind Sculptor traditional painting piece. So because of that reason, uh, you know, there's always this want and urge, like, where are the traditional planeswalkers? And remember that card, a Johnny Steadfast by Chris Ron? I was bidding on it. I lost it out. Uh, it was like fourteen thousand something dollars. That broke. A, it was the first multi five figure piece that we ever saw for newer art. And that painting was was kind of a point, like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Artists are like, wow. I could get five figures for my traditional art. Before Alpha, people were still trying to sell their paintings for $500 and no one would buy it. And even today, it's kind of crazy. There's actually older magic paintings that sell less, less than the newer art. Uh, some of you guys will probably argue, comments below, please. Which do you like better, the newer art or the older art for the traditional stuff? Um, I got to say, I'm a fan of both. And it's really hard to decide, honestly. Obviously, the newer art is more polished in a way. Uh, they've gone to more of a, a kind of a theme type of thing. But now, I've noticed that the newer art, they're starting to go back to what the artist wants to do or more creativity. It doesn't have to fit exactly the exact theme. There's more flexibility and the styles are incredible. So it kind of reminds me about like that's how Alpha started with kind of the older style uh, or, or whatever style they wanted to do. You know, yes, my mere force art director was like, you know, create that, create what you want, create, create whatever you feel, you know, and I want your style to come out, not what, like, hey, you know, the art director now has to fit a certain thing. So it's changed now where you're allowed to have more flexibility, which is amazing. And it really comes, you know, it really comes about another another part of this about why the market exploded in a way for the new art was I think it used to be the rarity factor in the sense that the art was very digital, right? It was basically, I was going to, I think it's about more than 80% or more was all digital art in some of the sets. And now what you have is that the market is actually leading towards, uh, I'm going to say more traditional, but yes, some of the sets where there are mostly traditional or are mostly digital have gone mostly traditional. And you probably thinking, well, Dan, that makes no sense. 
Why was it that when the art was mostly digital and some, you know, some originals, uh, there's only a little bit of originals, why is it that now there's more supply, the actual prices have gone up and crazy? And I think what it is, is that the rarity part of it, like, you know, when there was only very few traditional pieces, it actually sparked a massive interest in collecting originals again. And that, in turn, has caused a massive fandom for a lot of the artists I name and other artists that you'll see out there. New rising artists are coming on board all the time. The styles are absolutely incredible. And I got to say, I'm, I'm extremely impressed. I mean, I, and I have to admit, I've been out of the market for the newer art because I'm just purely, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the, the beautiful creations that the artists have made. I, I, don't even, I don't even know all the sets anymore. I, I haven't followed all the sets. I haven't really invested in the products. So I will say, though, I still, to this day, still go back and look at all the art in general. Uh, even the new art that's posted all the time, I still look at it. And I love it. You know, I think it's really made the industry what it is today. The artists are the industry. They are the, the voice. They are the, the, the visualization is what magic made magic so special, in my opinion, compared to like a Pokemon. So if you're thinking about investing in magic art, I want you to go to Vulcan Waga's website, check him out, incredible art. And also, I want to mention that every artist generally does fine art. So fine art is something that I really I, I think that you should consider investing in uh, for the, some of these, other, these artists, especially some of the bigger names. There was also an artist years ago uh, she still does work here and there, is Rebecca Gay, one of my good friends. She is one of the most prolific fine artists uh, of comparative to all of the other uh, uh, illustrators out there because she transitioned her career from focal, focusing on illustration, magic, uh, you know, all that kind of thing into only fine art, strictly. Now, she does, you know, she's done like some of the Commander of 2016 lands. I think I have four of the five so she, uh, actually, you know what? I have all of the commander, I'm sorry, of her lands. So uh, it really uh, shows you that they do bring out back like kind of a throwback of some of these vintage artists. And Rebecca, you know, was not alpha artist, but man, her style, it was just top notch. And she's revered by, you know, collectors uh, and, you know, even the artists themselves that is one of the best, most iconic artists of the game. And obviously, I know Therese Nielsen has gotten some bad rap over some politics stuff, and I'm not here to talk about that. But her art is absolutely, absolutely hands down one of the most iconic, uh, just incredible artists I've ever uh, just seen in my life. I mean, just her art is so unique and so special. So if you guys enjoyed the video, put a thumbs up and a like, comment, all that kind of stuff. Tell me if you want to see other art and stuff. I can do more videos like this. But I'm going to zoom in now into the art of the Mana Crypt Kaladesh. I hope you guys appreciate it. Thanks for watching the video, guys. All right, guys. So here it is. The Kaladesh Inventions Mana Crypt. Look at this, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. So a lot of you guys are wondering why you're selling, why you, know, why you do this kind of thing. Uh, to be honest with you guys, I'm more of a collector. I collect art more than I sell by a long shot. Uh, ask the wife. <laughs> she, she'll tell you. The reality is it's really, really, really hard to sell any art. I've learned throughout the years. But I like, I really, you know, first off, I have an engineering background. So I really appreciate the detailing of this piece. Uh, it, it reminds me a lot, lot of, uh, let me change the lighting here. It reminds me a lot of like, um, like kind of a, a futuristic, timeless kind of, uh, you know how like the, the, the French have their style of uh, decor. Um, I know there's like art deco, there's the, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like the type of you arts, art folks out there who know the terminology better than me, but it reminds me like, let's say this is like, it's kind of like a, a crypt is supposed to be a person who passed away or they're kind of a, a you know, uh, burial place right but i feel like when i walk into this room it's like some kind of futuristic uh decor 
or you know place to worship or something and absolutely it has that Kaladesh theme I don't know if you guys remember but Kaladesh was very big about uh, the vehicles and the world of Kaladesh had a lot of the uh, modernization you know and the metals you know come through and uh, you know it, it was that blue ether right that came across too I have the original Chris Ron crucible of worlds I gotta put that painting up and do a video too but I want you guys to just kind of take a look at it. Tell me what you think. I got to say, Vulcan is incredibly amazing with his art uh, in terms of his lighting, his details. It's very, it's very just beautiful. You know, just, I, I find him, his paintings to be very peaceful. He does a lot of just beautiful, uh, you know, um, portraits. I love the portraits he has done. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's going off to... Uh, a client in the United States. I hope he enjoys the painting. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And I hope you guys can put a comment or two. Uh, share it. And let me know if you guys want other videos like this. I appreciate you guys. Take care. Hey guys, it's me, Daniel with VintageMagic.com. Today I want to talk to you more about our artist representation services. If you have a portfolio of artists that you're looking for a commission, artist proofs, altars, signings, we are the one-stop shop you need. No one in the world has handled more important and rare Magic the Gathering art than myself. I've worked with some of the most iconic Magic the Gathering artists in working to acquire their original Magic art. The Artist Representation Service at VintageMagic.com is a one-stop shop. Being an art collector myself, I know how important it is that your time needs to be saved. What happens is you have lots of different artists around the world to manage and contact. Why not have a company represent you on every single artist that you speak to? This way, every single commission, every artist proof, every altar, every signing is managed as a one-stop shop. I've had tremendous experience in working with Magic the Gathering artists all over the world. And I look forward to helping you complete your Magic the Gathering art collection. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.